Hello, everyone, and welcome to 11 Foot Pole, a live stream tale of high adventure. My name is Glenn. I'm the referee for this session. Joining me around the table playing Karis, the hunter. Hunter. I'm Darren, playing Karis, the first level hunter. Matt? I'm Matt, playing the first level uh, Veritan, the elf. Thorgus. I'm JP, uh, playing Thorgus Runemane, the Dwarven Warrior. The Dwarven what? Warrior. Oh, okay. Hunter. Contractor. <laughs> <laughs> On his first adventure. That's right. I'm Jason, <laughs> playing the soon-to-be-dead cleric, Neroth. What? Where's, where's a little optimism here, man? I mean... Hey, first level stuff. The reality is a single hit, gone. Well, yeah, that's that's part of being you, first level. Have you been hit yet? Yep. Huh? Have you been hit yet? Not yet. All right. So we are in Simswald, which is the uh, onset of spring, uh, which ironically is where we are in the calendar in real life. Uh, on the thirteenth of Simswald, uh, you guys have reached. Uh, along with your your patron and and dowdy companion, uh, Sir Dieter, you guys have reached uh, the weald of um, both Bocephus, something like that. Bocephus, uh, yes, Bocephus, Bocephus, Bocephus yeah. Um, it's this underground dungeon complex that was once uh, the home of this. Uh, wizard who called himself Bocephius the Imperishable, um, who, to be sure, is long gone, but um, he built his, his lair in this dungeon complex under this silver oak, right? This towering silver oak tree with white leaves uh, way out in the, in, the, in the dolmen wood, out in, uh, out in Hex 0608, by the way. Um, so you guys fought your way through hardships unnumbered and, and side quests ignored and uh, finally made your way here to the, to the tree in question. And uh, Sir Dieter is just, you know, just, this is absolutely fabulous. You know? Going to be able to find the enchanted sword I've been looking for when we go inside. Yeah, so let's see if we can find the entrance around here. So, what do you guys do? You're in this clearing with this towering oak tree. I'm going to search for an opening, I guess. All right, so you start making your way around. Let me check. Let me check Gavin Norman's hole in the oak, the adventure that we're doing. It's an airy forest glade with a dreamlike atmosphere. Um, among the roots, you find a hole about three feet across. Looking down inside, you see um, it's halfway between like a, a ramp and just a straight up pit. Okay, it's like a very steep ramp um, that leads down to um, a, a sandy floor about 20 feet below. Um, and you notice the roots that are sticking out into this, into this earthen hole kind of almost form a natural ladder of sorts. What do you guys do? And remind me, um, at what time of day we got here? Is this uh, it's it's early in the day. This is like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock uh, in the morning. So because you guys either yeah. rested right before this, or you literally rested in this clearing. Go ahead, okay. Jay. So is, is it dark down in the hole? Or do you lose oh, yeah. the light? And you, you, so as you descend, you're going to need like a torch or vision or something. Yes, yes. It's dark down there. Thorgus, while, while everyone else is trying to figure out what we're going to do, Thorgus is just over there closely inspecting this oak tree. Um, mm -hmm. See how good of wood 
is, and if he might can come back in a future reference, bring some <laughs> use this it's, as one of his wood supplies. So it's like a redwood, you know, among out in the middle of a normal forest, right? So like it sticks up far enough above the forest canopy here that you guys could spot it from miles away. Um, not as many miles as I thought last time, but still miles away. <laughs> and um, so chopping it down would be a major endeavor uh, that would well, require several he's contractors. Gonna he's he's going to want to just come back from time to time and take a little each time as needed. Yeah, yeah. Sell it at, a, at a huge profit, you know, upsell it, say it's from the Dolman Wood and everybody. This may be the first uh, adventurer slash contractor I've ever uh, uh, game played with. <laughs> I was, I was, yeah. planning for, was planning for your side hustle in the middle of the adventure is nice. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, first I'd, adventures. I'd, I'd be happy to take the lead on the ladder working my way down. Cool. All right. Uh, uh, Thorgus, roll a d6. You're trying to get a one or a two. Two. Uh, you you definitely think you could get uh, like a rare hardwood kind of thing. Uh, of course, you know you'd have to get union uh, laborers to uh, harvest it. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know this is like this is rare Brazilian uh, hardwood here. This could make an excellent loot, for example, or a cabinet made out of this stuff. Be good stuff. Uh, all right, uh, Veritan, as you start climbing down, give me a D10. You're trying to get anything but a 10. Four. All right. And do you have dark vision? Do you, are you able to see in the dark? Not that I know of. <laughs> I don't have it written down anywhere that I do. I've only got listening at doors. We can all listen at doors. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Just has ears. I don't know about everybody else. But I do have a torch that I can like. Want. Do I? Do I? Can I carry it? Down elves. Or do I? Have right on your character sheet, elves have infravision to sixty feet. You have infravision to sixty feet. You have a two and six chance to listen at doors. And a two and six chance to detect hidden and secret doors. Now, what were you saying? Never mind. I don't need it since I, can, I got improvision. <laughs> All right. I was going to see you, if I had to light a torch and go down at the same time or not. Uh, you, reach, you reach the uh, sandy floor here. So this represents, well, you can't see where I'm pointing. This represents you all kind of standing up above ground, right? Matt, you've come down to the bottom here, and you see basically these uh, tunnels that head left and right um, as you get in. Um, the earthen walls are, are riddled with roots, and there's kind of a, a, a mist that kind of clings to the ground down here. It's just like a, it's just like an earthen tunnel that somebody dug out. It's not reinforced with anything or anything like that. And as I mentioned last episode, it's very much Luke on Dagobah, you know, climbing into that tree, and it's kind of this swampy, you know, little fireflies flying around kind of situation. But you see the sandy floor and um, the left and right. And right away, I'm going to get my short or my sword out so that just in case. All right. <laughs> While the rest of the guys are coming down. <laughs> All right. Who climbs down next? I'll come in. Say what? Yeah, N Neroth. Yeah, Ner Neroth will come in. What kind of armor is Neroth wearing? He's wearing a plate. <laughs> All right. Then roll a d6. You want to get anything but a six? There. Yeah, I'm going to make some noise. Come on, six. One. All right. Okay. You climb down safely uh, using the using the uh, roots as handholds. You find yourself down here at the bottom. 
I'll go. All right. Uh, what kind of armor are you wearing? Uh, studded leather. All right. Uh, roll a d10. Get room? anything but a 10. Is go ahead, Veritan. Is there room to step aside just enough in case they fall off the roof? <laughs> the yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys come in here to the uh, to the intersection a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I got a, I got a two. All right. So Sir Dieter looks across at Thorgus. Thorgus looks across at Sir Dieter. Sir Dieter puts up his sword and uh, starts climbing down. Ooh, he got a nine, but a nine's not a ten. Wait a minute. Oh, no, he has to roll a d6. He got a two. He 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 sounds like, like a 52-year-old guy trying to get up out of a chair after watching a whole episode of The Last of Us, you know? And it's like... Easy, ah, easy. Ah, 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 ah. But he what managed you to... Think about that? Yeah, but he, uh, it's a game of imagination, JP. Um, I don't have HBO. So far away, it's hard to imagine. <laughs> okay, he makes it down to yeah. the bottom safely, and now Thorgus is up top by himself. What do you do? 52 health, I wonder if he can stand up. Say what now? Thorgus is wearing chain mail. Uh, I think that's heavy armor. Well, that's probably not heavy armor, is it? Uh, yeah, roll a d10. Five. Five. Okay. So now all you guys find yourselves down here. Um, everybody roll a uh, d6 and tell me if anybody gets a one. No. Nope. I got a two. Nope. Okay. All right. So you guys see... This um, hold on a second. I mean, basically, there's no need to describe again what I've already described. Sandy floor, mossy root walls, low tunnel. Ah, you guys find an old leather glove, like laid across a root right here at the split of the junction. Hey, let me look at it. If the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Is it, that's right. is it pointing like either way? <laughs> no, it's not. That's a good guess. That's a that's a good guess in the Dolman Wood. But uh, no, it's just kind of like somebody took it off and laid it over there and didn't take their other one off. Yeah, Nairoff would like to uh, pick it up. Okay, <laughs> put left-handed <laughs> leather glove in your in your inventory. Oh, what? I- it's not it's not bestowed with some sort of plus one magical ability, or is it like elfin kind? What is it? It didn't explode or No, no, it's just a mysterious glove. It's it's in pretty good condition. It doesn't look like it's been down here for, you know, years or anything like that. It's a supple leather left handed glove. And there's not that. a hand in it, right? <laughs> no, no, there's no. Not no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did I forget to mention there's a demon hand inside? So, okay, gentlemen, well, we want to go left or right? Can yeah, we I can, tell any difference? You guys want to fight this? The, you guys want to fight this thing? That's uh, for my other campaign. Glenn, yeah, as we uh, as we look at both tunnels, can you we tell any appreciable difference between the two? Any source of air movement? Yeah. So either this, one or you listen down this tunnel and you hear a distant rushing sound, as if it's uh, wind or water, kind of a sound. Uh, whereas from this direction, you detect the faintest green glow. Speaking of which, for the people who don't have dark vision, is anybody going to light a torch? <laughs> I was going to wonder about that. Seems like a good idea. Well, I took one for the team the last time. I'm down to five. <laughs> I'll light one. Then for vision, the same as dark one. vision. Say what? <clears throat> Infravision, the same as dark vision? Not exactly. It, it, it's pretty close. Uh, it allows you to detect heat variations, um, but it's spoiled by regular light and stuff like that. Okay. One of so, the, notes, uh, the one of the notes I had, we got the clues was that uh, we're looking for an underground river. 
uh, where the ghouls are and the, and the source that we may be able to find this sword. So it's, I guess it's possible that could be the water rushing uh, from the one side. Hear any right ghoul sound? Note. What'd you say, JP? We hear any ghoulish sounds? You do not hear any ghoulish sounds. You just hear this rushing, like I say, you can't tell if it's wind or a river. What were you saying, uh, Matt? I just said I'm glad he had that written down because I was going to go for the green glow. <laughs> <laughs> you got to write things down, people. That's all the DM wants from you. That's all the DM at. Well, not all, but well, let- just, you know, write stuff down. On a, All right. on a whim, Neroth, Neroth is just choosing which way he would like to go. And, well, the dice say to the uh, water sound. All right. So is that Sounds the way you guys head? Sounds as good a place as any. Yeah. Who's in front? I guess it's Neroth. Okay. The only healer in the party. <laughs> for, all that shit you talk, for all that shit you talk about dying so fast, you're always in the front. <laughs> Isn't that and weird? He's got the plate and, he, and he's not been hit yet. <laughs> I've not once yet. complained about dying. Thorgus has had, never once complained about dying. I just had a bad night's sleep, I think. That was all I've had. Yeah, yeah me too. I had that on the first night. All right. If I'm holding my torch, does that mean I can't use my bow? That is exactly what it means, unless you drop the torch, at which point it has a chance of going out. I'm thinking, hand it to Neroth. I was thinking, yeah, hand it to somebody who's using a one-handed weapon, that if I'm back, I'm not going to be able to hit anything. Yeah, I'm using a mace. Okay, so I'll hand my torch to Neroth. Don't you have a shield, Neroth? Good question, good point. Um... (laughs) In order to have my armor class, I have to have that in my hand, right? Um, is that true? Yes. Yes. What's my deduction think, if it's on my back? Uh, I think we're going to go with the old, you can hold your shield and the uh, torch in the same hand. Um, right. Okay. Deal. Okay. All right. Uh, you guys are going along this sandy floor. You're kind of having to duck occasionally because there'll be a big root sticking out or it won't be uh, dug out as much. Uh, not you, Thorgus. You're fine. You can stand up, stand up tall the whole time. Um, the um, the noise of uh, of rushing wind or water gets louder as you're heading down the tunnel. When suddenly, um, right about there. A uh, a dude appears out of nowhere, just like, and he's suddenly there. And he's very much got the, uh, got the wizard look going on. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm, sure. And as you can see, he's a little bit see-through. He's a little bit um, ephemeral. Purple Road Wizard appears. He gestures benevolently (laughs) and utters the following phrase. Welcome to the realm of the imperishable. Please await in the provided for your own safety. Do not. And then the illusion disappears. Do not, not what? <laughs> wow. Reminded me of a Max Headroom. <laughs> that was a Garble. Was, a Max Headroom. That Garble was here, but not the Tennessee Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> <laughs> you are correct, sir. Okay. I'm I'm actually not on Wi-Fi. I'm plugged directly into my cable modem. So. 
Yeah, yeah, that was the joke. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do not sing tiny bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did it sound like he was saying to wait in an appointed area? Like he's some sort of gatekeeper? Is that that what you guys took away? Oh, you're asking them, yeah. We got to wait for the key master. <laughs> Possible? Right. Possible? I think we still got to keep going ahead, don't we? Yeah, he's... I, I think so. He, yeah. You described him as benevolent. He so, welcomed uh, us. Yeah. I, I kind of I kind of managed to get the word benevolent out. Yeah. Okay. So let's go for it. You know, now yeah. anyway. Yeah. 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 He was I nicer than right. the lady we thought about hiring. <laughs> <laughs> we. You guys get up to here, and um, as you enter into this room, the floor changes to cobblestones, right? Uh, It's like all sandy and stuff, and then you start to come out where, like, the cobblestones are under the sand. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it gets less and less sand, and and the cobblestones are more and more clear until you reach this room, and it's basically like a built-out room. Uh, Brick walls and a roof, crumbling patches of roots pushing through. It's got a 10-foot-high arched roof in this room. So in the room, you notice a way out to the north, way out to the east, and to the west, a stone door. He said, want to go listen at the door? He said confidently (laughs) that he had a stone door somewhere in his... Uh, But all around the middle of the room, Mm -hmm. uh, there is a carpet. There is a deep red patterned carpet um, in a circle that kind of doesn't go all the way to the edges of the wall, but there's a round rug about maybe 10 feet across, um, laid out here in the middle. All right. Now All we're right. covering that big hole that we're going to fall into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't step, on, don't would, step on the carpet unless we have to. Um, would Gavin Norman put a, 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 a rug over a pit? Is that old school D&D? Surely not. So, so maybe uh, Nareth was going to move forward. He's going to um, set his shield down Mm -hmm. temporarily, and with that left hand and torch, he's going to grab onto that carpet. Maybe try pulling it back towards himself. Some. Okay. As you uh, get closer to it, you realize it has a, a geometric pattern of gold and green inlaid in it. As you pull it back, it's heavy, and it feels like it's gotten wet a couple times, so it's kind of not that easy to pull back. Why don't you roll your strength or less on a 20-sided die for me? Can I use the one that's all 20s? No. That wouldn't help you because (laughs) you're trying to roll your strength or less. Strength or less. Oh, jeez. Well, I blew that. Really? All right. All right. So you grab it Dang. and you kind of you kind of pull on it a little bit, but um, like you feel like you're going to have to put your mace away, get somebody else to hold the torch, and like grab this thing with both hands to get it to move. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not setting my mace down. Um, okay. I will step aside. The next brave adventurer, do as you will. Okay. Matt, I was joking a little bit before, but do you want to go listen at the door, see if you can hear anything behind it? Yeah, sure. Why, why not? don't you walk on the carpet? Do you walk no, on the carpet? No, don't step on the carpet. No, don't step on the carpet. 
I'm going to skirt the edge if I can. <laughs> you can. All right. Um, uh, roll. I don't suppose you have your listen check roll written down either, do you? No, of course not. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, two and six chance. And six. It says. Yeah. Two, two and six, you said. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. So you're rolling a D6. You're trying to get a one or a two. Uh, failed on that. You don't hear nothing. <laughs> I hear myself breathing heavy because I'm out of shape. Right. <laughs> time, time well spent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you see the... See... Go ahead. Can we see anything around the other two tunnels? Thorgus, I assume you're bringing up the bringing up the rear here. Thorgus. Yes. No. Okay. Um. Darren, you see basically a, a stone hallway that heads off this direction. It only goes about twenty feet before it opens into a room. Uh, you think you see something like a statue in the middle of the room, but it's pretty dark down there. Who's looking up the north corridor? In my notes, it talks about that, that one of our clues was there was a, uh, a grouping of statues right. that were down here, something that they, uh, that they turned to gold. Yeah. So I guess it could be one of those. Does anybody go look at the north corridor? The North Corridor. Well, I've got what, the light. All right. Uh, would one would one have to step on carpet to go? No, you can you can corridor? you can go all the way around the edge of the room without stepping on the carpet. Thor Thorgus will go over there. All right, Thorgus. This is a much longer hallway. It goes at least fifty feet out to the edge of of uh, your infravision. Um, you think you might see a side passage, but it's hard to tell without going down there. The rushing sound is definitely coming from the north passage. So, Darren, the one you're looking down is quiet as the grave. <laughs> well, that's the not ominous at all. The rushing sounds coming from this hallway. So, do you guys form up and go north? Or open the so. door. I guess I Matt was there. Did Matt notice anything with that door when he was? Uh, yeah. So it is covered. It? it is covered in a um, tree motif, and it's not a stone door at all. I don't know who told you that, because it is obviously <laughs> made of wood. Hmm. That's what she said. <laughs> it is. It is a wooden door. Hey. Oh no, Matt fell onto the carpet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> face, face plant. <laughs> uh, it is a wooden door carved with tree motifs. Um, but you don't know if it's locked or not because you haven't set your hand on it and tried to push it open. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be safe to do. The whole tree, tree reference and tree huggerness and all that. Let me... Uh, Say hey, what? How about with my shield hand, step me forward and I'm going to knock on it. Bang, bang. With my shield. Uh, no, no one answers. There's no sound except the reverberation of your knocking. Okay. So how about we drop the... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to open the door, however that's possible, without me losing my shield. Or if I have to set it down, I'll set it down. Uh, so here's another uh, room built out of stone blocks, just like the one you just, like the one you're in. Um... There's not a lot to see. It's, it's, it's pretty clean. There's a table here on the far wall. And um, it's an ornamental 
It's not a, it's not a, got a skull on it. Um, it's like an ornamental wooden table. Very ornate, nicely made. Thorgus, you, you take one look at it. You're like, that's <laughs> quality workmanship right there. Uh, and it's got all these bottles on it. It's, it's got, it's like a, like a rich person's side table. It's got all his rare liquor, liquors on it. You know, it's like that. There's all these different shapes and sizes of bottles on there. Cool. What do you do? I'm going to go forward. And uh-huh. gonna... mm-hmm. gonna what does everybody go else do when they see him walk into the room with your only torch? <laughs> I can still see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna yell back. Maybe, maybe you should just wait for a moment. Uh, there's no no need for all of us to be in this funny space. But well, does ghost, anybody like? Ghost, didn't the ghost make some reference around waiting in an area before we went somewhere? This could be that space, I guess. It could be. It could be. So, do you guys stay where you're at, or do you guys crowd around the door and and watch his fate? <laughs> Unfold. Let's, let's let's crowd around the door without stepping on the carpet. Okay. <laughs> Everybody wants to make sure that the TM doesn't say, "Oh, you didn't say you're not oh, stepping on the carpet." You didn't, you didn't say, Simon says. <laughs> All right. So you step forward. Um, there are dozens of these little glass jars on the table, mm-hmm. right? Um. As you, as you start to look at them, um, like you think it's like pickled beets or something or pickled eggs. Like it's a, it's a, it's a dark liquid with something in it. And as you get a little closer, you look and you realize each one has a tiny little person inside pickled. There's like tiny little three or four almost like miniatures, but a little larger, three or four inch tall little people in each jar, like the back room at some kind of freak show in the 1800s. They happen to uh, resemble us? (laughs) No. (laughs) Miniatures, not voodoo dolls. (laughs) They're beings. I mean, are they clothed? Are they... What are we so you take you take a look. Um, some of them are wearing like um, as you look closer, you start to realize like these are little like forest sprites or something. Oh. Okay, because some of them have these little smocks on that look like they're made out of leaves, you know. And uh, one of, one of them has like a, a tiny little armored plate breastplate that's like made out of wood. Like like an acorn almost type thing, um, and on a couple of them you can see like little wings that are folded up against their bodies. Um, there's only one jar out of all of them that doesn't fit the pattern. There's a large uh, like wine bottle sized jar um, that you can't see through and has a, a cork stopper. The rest of them like literally just have little like lids. Like glass lids sitting on them. Okay. Are they moving mean? inside the jars? Or are they holding? Are they? They're. They look dead. They look dead to Neroth. Like they're they curled dead. up in there, and they look dead, or or in hibernation maybe. <laughs> so someone collected them in these jars like they were insects or something. Yeah. Tell you what, um, I'm gonna scoop up what I can get under one arm and still hold my shield. Not the bottle. Not the bottle. Okay. Not the one that's corked. Okay. But I want, I want the little people. I'm okay. I'm scoop a big handful of those jars up uh-huh. and I'm make my way back to the door. Okay. Have you got the... Has everybody got their equipment sheet printed out in front of them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shows your backpack. So, so Jason, you're going to write down four little people jars in your backpack space. Who uh, did anybody print out the version that that allows you to track torches and track um, uh, lanterns? Yes. Okay. Uh, does everybody have that on theirs? Mean from backpack. 
Yeah, there should be a little thing that just says torch and it shows how many rounds a torch lasts and then lantern and it shows how many rounds a lantern lasts. I added that later, so you might not have got it. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the one that talks about how long the things last. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, a torch lasts, I think, uh, six turns. Okay. That's a long time, right? Uh, that's an hour. So mark off a turn. So, uh, Jason, since you're carrying it, mm-hmm. uh, draw six little boxes on there and mark off one of them. Okay. And then whose torch was it in the first place? Okay, Darren. so you mark off a... Darren, you mark off a torch, torch out of your inventory? Okay. All right. Uh, there's no other ways out of this room, uh, Neroth. You head back out? I head back out? Um, yes. Okay. All right. You guys are back out here not stepping on the... Not stepping on the thing. You guys go north or east? North or east? Any reason not to keep following the river sound? I can't think of any. All right. Other than That's Orgus's first adventuring campaign. He <laughs> thinks going towards the water sound would be. Hey, okay. and oh, by the way, I didn't move. I um, once we get started in a direction, I'm going to dump one of those jars out and see what happens. Would you guess the big cork bottle is the kind of preservative that that's kind of the juice that those guys were in? I kind of think if we pulled the cork, we were all going to like, yeah. Right, right. I, I, was, I wasn't in favor of pulling the cork. I was just yeah. speculating. Right. Might make a good <laughs> weapon. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Do you get attacked by tiny people, I guess? That's true. You prefer the term little people? <laughs> Well, when you're not shoved in a jar, you can call yourself whatever you want. But yeah, I, I definitely want to pop pop the cork on one of those, or lids on one of those jars, Glenn, okay? All right. I just want to see what is, you know, does it animate, or am I really carrying around a bunch of dead people? All right, so um, you guys start going down that north hallway, and uh, you just get 10 or 15 feet, and Neroth is like, hold on a sec, guys, and you take one of these things out, you you pull the lid off. Um, it basically is the is the smell. What? Hey, genie. Uh, it's basically, the smell of like formaldehyde. Yeah. Okay. Um, and kind of you open it, and nothing happens, and and like you pour it out, and the um, you know, the formaldehyde kind of pours out first. And then, like, the little guy just, like, flops out on the floor. Aww. And it's just laying there all kind of gross looking. Okay. <laughs> all right. Leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of poke him with a stick a little bit. Nothing happens. Jump out of the way. Got, now I got three. <laughs> all right. You guys continue down the North Hall. Uh, you go... Uh, about 20, 30 feet, and you come to a door on the left-hand side. Um, And you can see up ahead a door on the right-hand side. What do you guys do? Uh, I guess I'll try listening at the door again. (laughs) All right, give it a roll. Five again. <laughs> nope. Let me check something real quick. If I put my ear against the door and my head gets chopped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, live and, live and learn. <laughs> I guess. Um... You don't you don't make out any discernible noises, but you do catch a whiff of a very unpleasant smell. Um, I always say it's like Detroit on Trash Day. That kind of a that kind of a distinct, pungent, unpleasant smell. That is Just the a whiff. Of undead undead breeding ground to it. Uh, <laughs> can we? Is, is, but the. The rushing sound is still straight ahead? It is. 
And that smell in no way smells similar to the smell of formaldehyde. No, no, you didn't smell it, but but uh, but Veritan tells you no. It's a it's an awful um, un unidentifiable mm -hmm. smell. I'd say let's keep going unless there's any reason to go towards the Detroit stink. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I've been oh, in rooms like I've been in rooms like that. It's no good. <laughs> What you say, Jason? I said trolls tend to be fairly stinky. Oh yeah. All right, you guys go another thirty feet. Now there's a door on the left. Ignore or listen. Someone else try. <laughs> <laughs> but it's your skill. It's, you're the one who's oh, good at it. Skill, I'll try. You got that skill too. So if y'all want to walk on by, I'll listen as y'all. Oh, we walk cool. By. All right. See if he has any better luck. Yeah. They're off. Could come forward since you got the uh, ring of fire. We eat all the corner. Maybe he just got a two and six night. chance, and I rolled a two. You rolled a two? Hey. You rolled a two. Nice job. I mean, I, mean, I listened something. or didn't listen. Maybe. That's a success. So on those, you want the yes, low roll. Yes. Uh, you hear nothing. <laughs> wow. The sea bass, that's, that's how it's done. That is yeah, that's how it's done. That's what a professional does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat this to the There's a difference. Next time. <laughs> There's a difference because I didn't hear anything because I failed. He didn't hear anything because there was nothing to hear. <laughs> yeah, chose not to hear. Yeah, chose not to hear. All right, what do you guys do? That wizard was full of crap. <laughs> you guys continue, continue yeah. on down. All right. You come to an intersection where you can go left or right. This way, to the right, um, almost immediately, there's another door. This way okay. um, is where the rushing sound is coming from. The hall goes about 40 feet and turns right. I think that's me at the front, so I guess I'll try to listen to the, <laughs> listen to the door. This is old school gaming, guys. This is, this is what we signed up for. Okay, listening at doors. Adventure. That's right. This is it. Listening to doors in the dungeon. Hoping against hope to hear something helpful. No, I did not. I'm you don't hear anything. Myself. I can't hear things. I can't, I can't shoot an arrow. You <laughs> are convinced. Bigger, bigger ears. You're convinced you did as good as Thorgus in hearing nothing. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just you just know it. Uh, you do think you smell that same do I bad. Smell? Do I... Okay. You do think you smell that same bad smell. Um, a rotten fish, rotten chicken kind of smell. Burst through the door or go left? <laughs> I, I, I don't... Anyway, I, yeah. yeah, if we're in a bunch of undead stuff, going towards a rotten smell sounds awful. Yeah, I, I yeah. keep us going towards, towards the... the uh, go. Yeah. The rushing right. water. Yeah, yeah. You guys turn left. Now the... The rushing sound is getting more and more uh, distinct, and it definitely sounds like an underground river. It doesn't sound like air anymore. Like, you can kind of make it out. It's definitely an underground river. You go about 30 feet. You turn right. Um, the air is not quite as foul down here. <laughs> so, and this... <laughs> As soon as you turn the corner, uh, you see three dead bodies, uh, human-sized, uh, just laying on the floor in the hallway right up here. Uh, and then up here, it turns right. Does one of them only have one glove? <laughs> you gonna get closer to find out? Oh, we gotta go. 
passed him, I guess. Oh, Darren's so character yeah. comes running up. <laughs> do it, do, are any of them missing a glove? Right. So, so how, how dead is how dead is dead? How dead? How dead? I'm saying like well, dead, 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 dead last week or wait, can, everybody can't talk at once. Jason. Dead last week or dead like last month? Well, I mean, you just see him down the hallway right now. Are you going to go down and check him out? How about um, how about I, I, I pull out one of my um, rocks for my uh, mace or my sling? Right. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I give it a toss down that hallway towards the dead bodies. Okay. So you you hit one of the you hit one of the bodies. I mean, they're just right here. It's not like they're yeah. you know sixty feet away. Uh, you throw one of your one of your rocks. It hits the body. It bounces off. It does sound like a kind of a slightly squishy sound. Um, that's about all you can tell. Like, Don't hear is, that, is that better or worse? Right. I don't know. <laughs> don't hear any movement or nothing. No, you don't hear any movement. Well, let's go down and investigate. Sure. Yeah. I've got the torch. I'm so carefully, carefully, okay. and I mean, <laughs> all the way, right? Looking all around me, up and down. I'm going to mm -hmm. see me, look at the balls, and look at the ground, um, and tread carefully. Uh-huh. Um, because to the uh, pile of bodies. Well, yeah. Okay, so you, yeah. you get closer, and uh, and you take a look at them. Um, they, uh, they look like drown, like people who drown. Okay. Oh. Their, oh. their hair is all lank. Their skin is gray. Um, they, they're kind of a little bit bloated. Um, and they look like, you know, they're just dressed like village commoners. They're not really dressed like explorers of the dolmen wood or, or adventurers or anything like that. Um, they've just kind of got commoners, uh, two are male and one is female, and they've just got commoners shirts and breeches on and, and uh, the woman is wearing like a dress. And they're just laying there like... Th do you guys think that means this area floods? Because if they drowned, they yeah. should have sunk. I, I wonder if that means at some point this part of the passageway flooded. The way they're the way they're positioned, it looks like somebody just threw them here. You know, like they're laying at these awkward kind of, you know, not like they they sat down and just died or something. Not like they washed up. It looks like they could have been washed up. Yeah. It looks like they could have been washed up. Yeah, like I say, it's just a really random, awkward ragdoll kind of thing going on with their with their position. But it's a river. It's not an, an ocean. There shouldn't be a tidal piece here. This shouldn't be kind of a an ebb and flow. This would have had to have something specific if they washed up here. Mm -hmm. It depends on if there's a heavy rain, maybe that passageway flood. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So do we go past them, turn our backs on these okay. things that could probably be in the middle of this ghoul-infested well, area? Why were we chasing the sound of water anyway? Because um, we go there. For... It says that that's the source and that that was leading us to the clue. I, what I wrote down uh, that we thought that might be near where the sword is. The sword. Yeah. The first, uh, yeah. Yes, I'm. Uh, the whole reason I brought you lads is uh, there's a legendary sword here that I've got to uh, recover. My last adventure, my last hurrah. <laughs> hey, anyway, all, all, all I have, all I have on the river is it's the source of all the ghouls. <laughs> ah, well, that sounds a little less hopeful. <laughs> mm. river, river of sticks sounds like. But uh, uh, don't ghouls eat dead bodies? I mean, yeah. <laughs> and I have another note that there's a water dragon that's within a flooded tunnel. Uh, so close some, there's some bad crap close. Yes, well, I mean, no, no, no guts, no glory. You've got to. All right then. You've got to risk it for the biscuit. That's one of my nightly vows. 
I took a nightly vow to risk it for the biscuit trap. <laughs> well, it sounds as though perhaps you should go forward to investigate. Ah, at last, yes. Follow me, lads. He comes to the front. So much following, but here, let me take this torch. <laughs> ah, well, I believe I've got a sword and shield situation. Yes, I can carry it with my shield. <laughs> Very nice. Ah, so that's what that's So, Matt, did you have any clues from where the sword location might be? No. I did not. <laughs> All right. So he leads you, lads. The, the tunnel kind of turns back into a natural um, rock area. Like, they, they dug in here. And as you get out here, the river, the underground river is flowing. Oh, this would help if you guys could see. As you get out here, the underground river is floating by. Or is, is flowing, flowing by. by. Thorgus, uh, roll a listen check. <laughs> what are the results? They Three. Do. Say what? Success or failure? I said two. A two, yes. a success. All right. So everybody else is out in area 19. Um, it's thick with mist in here. There's a rushing river, cold and fast running. Um, there's a, there's a half eaten dead body right next to the river. Okay. And, uh, Pile of bones. So, might I suggest that maybe the bodies in the hallway were drug up by some creature that feasts on poor adventurers? Eh? Eh? Mm -hmm. Pile of bones. Ready made for the situation. Um, so there's a, there's a fair amount of, um, blood and stuff on the, on the sand. Um, there's even, Sir Dieter sees a little rowboat moored up to like a post in the water. And is this like a cavern? I yeah. I mean, like, so what's the situation above us? Uh, so the ceiling... Is basically like eight feet up. It's like, um, I mean, it's just like a, a river flowing through a natural cavern, right? So you can look like both. Eight. You can look both ways along the river. The cavern is open. You see what I mean? Yeah. So you could you yeah. could row up or down the river, but you're not going to get a chance because Thorgus, <laughs> um, Thorgus. Oh, hell. Rolled a clutch roll. He heard the sound of a, of a foot scrape behind him, and when he turned around, he saw the three bodies in the hallway had gotten up and were creeping up behind him. I should have torched him. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Does Thorgus... Not us anything. What, is, what, is, uh, what does Thorgus say when he turns around and sees these bodies in motion? I guess... Um He's around with his Warhammer, and as he's doing that, he says, I am not an adventurer! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, who is going... Uh, Thorgus, you're going to be in charge of rolling for initiative this fight. I rolled a five. You've got to meet or beat that in round one. 
Oh, sorry, a D6? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can't do it with a D20, that, that'd be even better. It's a one, yeah. A one. Okay, so my guys get to go first. Mm. One of them runs up to Thorgus and attacks. Um... Attacks. I'm going to say a five does not hit you. Or a three. So you've got two ghouls working on you. Uh, Naroth, roll, uh, roll your intelligence or less on a 20-sided die. The other natural 20, I'll roll the whole game. Okay, all right. Jeez. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so, movement. Are any of you moving? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go closer into the bone pile. Okay. But I'm going to stay on the um, outskirts as much as I can. You know, and you're the only one in the party that can turn undead, right? Her. Yeah, I don't have the ability to turn undead. Oh, at first level, you don't even—you can't even turn undead. No, I have no spells. And can we double check that? Turning undead isn't a spell. Turn dead isn't a spell. That is correct. <sighs> Cleric <sighs> spell casting, turning undead. Clerics may invoke the power of their deity to repel undead monsters encountered. To turn undead, the player rolls 2d6. Yeah. You can turn That's undead from level key one. Keyword oh, there being me. Yeah, well. How does that, how does that work? Uh, well. <laughs> literally just what? read it. <laughs> you pull out your. Whose side are you on? You pull out your even, soar, your even star symbol and you. Yeah. Lean towards the undead, and you say, "Back, foul creature of error and darkness!" And it either runs away or doesn't. Okay, let's do that. All right, because as I remember, my 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 school of or my my religious body was or background was dealing with the undead. Oh, that's that right. Like your saint, your patron saint is like the yeah. the scourge of the undead, right? Right, right. We don't like the undead. All right, so you start. We are on page 22 of Gavin Norman's uh, Old School Essentials. Um, to turn undead, the player rolls 2d6. The referee consults the table opposite. So roll 2d6. Tell me what you get. I did. I got a 9 total or a 6 and a 3. A 9. The DM, the referee will consult the table opposite, comparing the roll against the hit die of the type of undead monsters targeted. Uh, these monsters have two hit die. You are... Oh, wait a minute. Level progression. Okay. Okay, so your level... Hit dice of monster type. Two hit die monsters. So I guess you have to get a nine to turn them. But you got a nine, right? I got a nine. Right. Got okay. A nine. If the attempt succeeds, the player must roll 2d6 again to determine the number of HD creatures affected. Okay, so there's I got three. <laughs> What'd you get, Naroth? I got six double threes. Okay. Um, Roll two, 2d6 rolls higher than or equal succeeds. Okay. So, so Thorgus, these things are like clawing at you and their, their tongues are like sticking out unnaturally far. They've got these sharpened freakish teeth and all of them are like scratching at you and trying to get at you. And you're, you draw your hammer back to give them a good, a good smashing. And he leans forward back, foul creature of error and darkness. And, um, all three of them are like, Aah! and they kind of fall back and start to retreat. Now, did I turn them? You turned them. You you I, did it I, with no, your no, holy just, symbol. So now he has done this. So. I mean, but what I'm saying is, are they now 
turn into some other like you know or did i just turn them around that turns them away yeah it doesn't turn them into anything but it makes them run all right um that'd be really cool if you turn them into like analyze yeah (laughs) (laughs) imagine you're mad at a single car creatures of the night run from the hammer (laughs) of thorgus Uh, Turns Undead will leave the area if possible and will not harm or make contact with the cleric. So they leave the area. That's a win. Gentlemen, I need a 30 second timeout for a bio break. All right, let's take a five minute uh, bio break and uh, we'll be back after. 